What is up guys, Jay here from MJ Tech coming back here with the Ibex 800T. Today we are doing a long trip review, something that not many people have done. And well, the cool part about it is that I will be recording it. I already have all my gear set up. I also installed some equipment here on the bike to install cameras and whatnot. I am taking my stepson with me and I'm just preparing everything here inside of the containers and we are almost set to go we are driving 144 miles up north i already broke in the bike it has about 650 miles right now approximately and i did the oil change as a matter of fact it has been posted here on my channel so let's go for an adventure guys this is what it's all about Alrighty guys, so we are all set. We just fueled up and we are ready to rock and roll. I told you guys it has 650 miles, but it's in fact 626, but we are still broken in as we know. And well, I am going to talk a little bit here about the, uh, the Ibex, okay? I've owned it now for a little over a month and a half approximately. And uh, it has been a fabulous bike. Now, as we know, and for those bikers out there, there's no perfect bike ever, okay? Uh, that's just a given, guys. No perfect bike. This bike has had some minor issues in which uh, the good news is that they have been already resolved. Uh, the one that I had, uh, well, it was kind of my fault. So these bikes and pretty much every adventure bike out there is typically uh, taller than the average bike. And by that, I mean that my inseam here is about 30 inches and this bike is about 32 inches in height out of the factory. And uh, I'm on tippy toes right now. So I had to order a new suspension. I will briefly explain why. The suspension that we have on the back on this bike uh, comes with a kit that you purchase on AliExpress and it's about 30 bucks and it lowers the suspension a little bit so me taking it apart I took it apart the wrong way and I ended up ruining the suspension because I didn't need to take it apart I just needed to compress the spring and slide that plate out instead I took it apart and all the liquids like the uh, nitrogen and uh, also some gas uh, or nitrogen is gas but also some oil it all came out and here in West Palm Beach there's nobody that really works on that I mean um, th there was a guy that I thought could do it he ended up saying that he can't do it so this is a KYB uh, branded suspension and so I had to order a new one of a uh, CF Moto part distributor and well it was about 700 bucks yes that's how much I paid for stupidity and uh, well it did arrive I installed it and that was it for that the second issue I had uh, with this bike and this one was not my fault is that there was a software glitch with the fan to where the fan wouldn't kick either uh, early enough or it would just work uh, too poorly to where the bike would overheat and also give you a error so you had an error on the screen and then it was like around this area here so basically you had to shut off your bike do like a little cycle thing and then turn it back on and that cleared the issue but it was a minor inconvenience and it usually happened when riding on hotter climates like the one that I am now after the software update I haven't had any issues with this bike and it's been nothing more than enjoyment at least for myself guys this bike has a very nice uh, upright riding position which is super comfortable I mean it's been super reliable so far uh, never left me stranded anywhere 
uh, I know it's 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 just hardly broken in and we don't know yet how is it going to do in long term but that's why I'm doing this little test uh, this is my first long ride uh, going over 100 miles in distance I think the longest that I've ever gone is about 80 miles so today we're gonna do 144 miles and that's about two hours and 36 minutes according to my GPS right here guys and in case you guys want information about this bike just go ahead and uh, make sure that you check out our Facebook group it is called uh, CF Moto uh, Ibex 800 T North America I will be leaving that link down below that way you guys can go on there and you can learn all kinds of stuff uh, we already have done some maintenance on it I did the oil change I also uh, you know check I always like to check all the bolts and make sure that everything was a spec uh, for the suspension I haven't adjusted anything yet I left it just the way that it is and uh, it's been handling uh, super great guys so I don't have any complaints uh, the next thing that I plan to do is add a GPS I already bought the uh, GPS holder bracket which goes around this area here and that's coming uh, soon I got it on AliExpress and that's the only thing about the parts availability for this bike especially aftermarket stuff and accessories is that dealers uh, the dealer network on these bikes kind of suck because my nearest dealer that carries accessories in which he is limited as well I say he because the owner is a he but uh, he's very limited as well and he's about an hour and 40 minutes away from me so yeah I, I you know I, I happen that I mean at this point for me it is a little bit more convenient just to order from Aliexpress so all my accessories have been from there now on a separate video guys I will talk about the mods and uh, accessories that I've added to this uh, bike right here you see one this is a reservoir guard it's obvious to say that I also had uh, some knobs installed here for the front suspension for the adjustment that way you don't need to be getting a tool at the time you can simply move it with your hands it is a lot better and they are gold in color I'm not sure if you guys can see that and another accessory that you can see right here is the visor for the display so that the heat or the sunlight doesn't beat it up and uh, those are the things that you can see of course I got more stuff and uh, like the radiator guard I, I got the fog light guards but again that's going to be coming on a separate video with more details and giving you guys uh, a better view of how it looks guys it is a very smooth ride in the sense that it vibrates I mean honestly I haven't tried many adventure bikes yet I come from, uh, from the sports world my strongest bike has been a Z900 by Kawasaki, a 2019 that I had, and I no longer own it. Uh, but this one, guys, I mean, the motor, we, we know that this is a KTM engine. It comes from the Duke 790, and it is super, super stable. I mean, I don't get hand fatigue. Uh, keep in mind that sometimes any rider out there can get hand, uh, hand fatigue from the throttle side. But that's when I activate here the cruise control, which works perfect. Never had an issue, but it is limited to 80 miles an hour. And that eliminates my hand fatigue as I can let go for a little bit, you know, stretch my hands a little bit. Uh, but typically you do this on the highway. So if you're riding on the city, well, just take advantage of the stoplights and then stretch your hands. But besides that, guys, uh, the uh, pegs are positioned quite nicely. My knees are not uh, too bent, as I would call it. They're nice in a uh, relaxed position. My back doesn't hurt. I don't get back pain. And so far, the longest ride that I've done with this uh, bike is about uh, one hour and about 40 minutes. Constant ride. I'm talking about non-stop. So, 
you know this is something important to me years ago I had a, uh, a accident where my back got kind of messed up in the sense that uh, some of my spinal cord discs are kind of ruined and so I do get back pain with uh, sports bike uh, position okay so that's why I, I kind of got out of that uh, you know particular bikes it's because of the back pain guys Something awesome here with the Ibex 100T that I did is that after swapping the coolant for the engine ice, you guys can see right here on my screen on the left that it doesn't go above two bars. Okay, if we click here on set, this is the temperature 183 degrees Fahrenheit, guys. That's quite cool considering that today we have temperatures of 93, 95 degrees Fahrenheit here in Florida. It's quite hot and the engine is running quite cold. Now this only happened after, again, I swapped the coolant for the engine ice, guys. So this is a recommended mod right here. With two people right now on the bike, myself and my stepson, and this thing can pull. Let's give it a little bit. It goes to 100 in like no time. As you can tell right here this thing is a beast guys again two people and it didn't struggle to get there all right guys so it's been about an hour hour 15 minutes that I've been riding and uh, GPS is telling us to exit here and we're gonna take this opportunity to kind of take a break I feel like my Botox is kind of like sleep right now uh, this is a comfortable bike as I've been mentioning however guys after riding for that amount of time Yeah, you had to take a little break because uh, things start hurting on your body uh, But so far man, this thing is just fantastic. I'm telling you guys uh, I mean, uh, it's hard to explain it You have to ride it for yourself to really get that experience, but I'm trying to put it in words uh, you see the other day I went to uh, Harley Davidson right because I saw this bike the Pan America and I really like the looks of that bike as a matter of fact on the group that I mentioned to you guys uh, there's a whole bunch of postings that I made whether or not I should have switched but the bike was just simply too expensive and the handling was not much different in the sense of you know how tall the bike was what I did like was the um, self-adjusting suspension, which allows you to flat foot. Uh, that was the main reason why I put interest on the uh, Pan America, but that was pretty much all, guys. So I think I'm gonna keep the Ibex. The Ibex is only about 13,000 out the door. You know, a lot of people say 10, 9, 99, whatever, or, or 10,500. But realistically, if you're getting it from a dealer, uh, you will pay the dealer fees, the assembly fees, taxes, and all that stuff, the paperwork. So you're walking with about 13000 The Pan America, I was going to walk away with about $26,000, guys. Not including that, well, this was going to be depreciated a little bit because it's been used if I did trade in this bike. So in the end, I decided to just keep the, uh, the Ibex, of course, and just continue using it. Uh, most likely until it dies.
the cruise control on this bike as I mentioned before it's uh, very useful of course right now I'm resting my hands as you can tell and it feels very good after a while you do get hand fatigue at least myself uh, some people don't some people are fine doing the whole trip and they don't have any issues but I do so uh, the only downside of it that I really don't like is that it is limited to 80 miles an hour. So let's say you're going 85, 90, you can't set up the cruise control to those speeds. And to me, that's a safety concern. I think that CF Moto should fix that with the software update. Something I truly dislike about this bike, just to mention one of them, is that when you are on first gear and you guys are doing less than 20 miles an hour, I call it twitching. I know people will say something wrong with the fueling or something like that, but it has to do with the throttle. It twitches, guys, it twitches, but the good news, I guess, is that it only lasts for about 25 miles an hour. So once you go above 25 miles an hour, moving forward, you don't have any issues at all. On my first impressions of the bike when I first got it out of the dealer, I mentioned the mirrors. And believe it or not I still had the mirrors uh, but my complaint with them uh, I mean you can see clearly in the sense that you know they don't have any uh, block spot like with your shoulders you can see clearly but they vibrate like crazy guys they rattle a lot something weird about the Ibex 800T in which a lot of people have noticed is that there's like a dead spot of power at about 5,000 RPMs. For instance, if I'm accelerating, right, I go up to 4,000 RPMs, everything's good. When you hit the 5,000, it kind of like, it feels like it's bogging out, and then it comes right back at about 5,500-ish, 5,800-ish, it comes right back up. So, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with a software or something, but yes, I just wanted to point that out, guys. Finally guys, we got to an area here where we can hit some twisties. We are just about 20 miles away from my destination. And yes, uh, these roads right here, uh, I have gone through them before. And uh, this is near Kissimmee, Poinciana area in Florida, of course. And these roads are really, really cool to twist around. And yeah, it handles great. Even with a passenger in the back, you don't really feel the weight as you're moving, guys. I also have my cases filled with a whole bunch of things like clothing. I have uh, uh, electronics, drones, all kinds of stuff in there. And you hardly feel it, guys. So again, this is a pretty good bike as well for that particular use. You don't feel the weight in my opinion it has been very well distributed on this bike beautiful scenery guys we have now done uh, approximately let me see about two hours maybe and we just have about 30 minutes to go That's the quick shifter. It does jerk a little sometimes. Uh, hardly noticeable as I've been breaking her in. Uh, it's been progressively getting a little better. But uh, yes, it does jerk and I feel like I'm about to break the bike. And I, I'll ju I just rather use the clutch. I don't really use the quick shift that much. Unless I have to, if my hand is occupied, I'm doing something here with the phone real quick. And I have to shift then yes I'll do it but if I don't have to I, I really don't use it guys we are very close to our destination that will conclude today's review of the Ibex 800T we did about 144 miles and the only thing we didn't do was the off-road capabilities but you guys have seen from probably other videos out there that this is a more than capable bike for off-roading not maybe for aggressive off-roading but if it's gravel, something like where we're standing at right now, it should do just fine. Now, again, don't abuse it because the main purpose of it, in my opinion, is that, well, it is a touring 
bike. It is excellent for long commuting. I'm telling you guys, I have ridden this thing for over two hours. And the only stop that I made was because I had to go to the restroom. And that was pretty much it. Excellent bike. Great price. I really have no regrets whatsoever owning this bike. The only thing that, well, I think I can fix it is the height and, uh, well, the throttle issue that I mentioned earlier. Those are the only two things that I dislike about the bike, but I think it has a very nice design, very aggressive look all the way around, as you guys can tell. Um, of course, these are optional. You don't have to ride with them. And um, I carry two people in it and it did perfect also for the few guys i only had to refill once because it was at about two bars from five and i don't like to leave my bikes empty just because there's sometimes debris at the bottom of the gas tank and all of that gets sucked in with this being said guys let me know what you think about the ibex 800t is it on your list would you trust a chinese brand let me know what you guys think down below thank you for watching subscribe for more comment share the video and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos like this see you later